something resonates with me and then I have a, a desire to want to share it with other people. And that's kind of the litmus test for everything that we do. If I, if I can't stop playing it and want to share it, then it must be good, you know? I feel like I'm a pretty average person. If it appeals to me in some way like that, it must appeal to the next person. So I have to play it to them. People like me are ten a penny in the record business, you know, businessmen who love music, that's easy to find. People, what we all look for in the record business is people with great ears. So it's like there are artists and then there are people with great ears. And that's what you pay the money for, people with great ears. And, and as far as I'm concerned, there's only, well, probably only one in Australia and that's Steve Pat. And I think the PAV experience is encapsulated by the avalanches. And the avalanches is that record where you go, Jesus, this guy's got something that you can't see. And that boy needs therapy. Psychosomatic. That boy needs therapy. That's the record, I think, that, that is more about him seeing forward than any other record. I think I was just in the right place at the right time. And, you know, I got to be involved and work with those guys during that time. Um, and just believed in what they were doing. Lying down on the couch. Well, what does that mean? You're a nut. You're crazy in the coconut. What does that mean? That boy needs therapy. I'm gonna kill you. That boy needs therapy. Granny Gazoo, let's have a two. I want to count three. That, 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 that. This is um, Stephen, Pav, and this is Adam from the Beastie Boys. He generally comes from a love of music and a love the love of music and you know. I know that he, um, the bands that are on his label or the bands he deals with are all because he likes the music. It's not driven by a economy. I was working with a band called The Plunderers and um, I hitched a ride with them from Canberra to Sydney and along the way they were like, um, look, you know, we're moving to Sydney, we've got our band, uh, we're looking for someone to sort of help us organise things and you were pretty good at organising things, would you like to sort of help us out? You know, collected music. That was what it was all about. At his house, it was just like wrote stacks and stacks of vinyl that, you know, started on the floor and then ended up in a huge floor to ceiling shelves. Around the same time, someone I was living with, their partner's father owned a, a club and he'd booked the bands there and then had and then finished his university and moved on to bigger and brighter things and asked if I wanted to take over running the venue. So um, I started booking all the bands for the club. And from there, it just kind of snowballed into big, booking a bigger club and I toured Mudhoney and they were like, well look, you know, you should work with our friends Nirvana, they're really great. And I'm like, well, I really like Nirvana, the Bleach House is fantastic. So they put me in touch with Kurt and Chris and I just pretty much rang them up and said, hey, you guys want to come to Australia? And they're like, hey, it sounds great. So I kind of moved forward and booked it all and then Nevermind came out and sort of did what it did and it was a very successful record and I think by the time they were in Australia, they were probably number one band all around the world, you know. I don't feel like personally I was an important part of it. I mean, I think it, it, would, it was a rolling stone and it would have happened anyway. I was just lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time. So I got to pick it up and roll with the stone for a couple of weeks. He hangs with the people who are going to make the scene, not the people who are the scene and not the people who work, want to be the scene. And I can't tell you why that is, but, but like I say, in the record business, it's a priceless thing. And you, you look at it and you say, uh, it's, it's as creative as being an artist, it's that ability to see forward. I find bands from all parts of, like, all parts of Europe that you would never expect to really know about, but it seems with the, the mediums that are available to people, um, that the moment somebody starts talking about something or it's a live, a live online, then people tune in really quick. You know, and there's like, like blog aggregators like Hype Machine. So the moment a few people start talking about it, speaking in the music world, then you know, other people know about it very quick. So it's really hard to sort of be first at something or to tap into something before other people are really abreast of it. Something like Odd Future, you know, it's probably a good example. Like he's got Odd Future coming to, to Vivid and Odd Future is the, absolutely the most exciting act there. Everybody's been talking about it all over the world. And I, you know, Pav rang me one day, I was talking to him about it, and he had all these ideas, he said, I got these kids Odd Future, I'm like, Odd Future, I read about them on Pitchfork, he's already booked them. And it's like, all I can say about Nirvana is, I don't know, because Nirvana, you could say it's good luck, he booked an act, it blew up on him. But that bill, I can't remember who else was on it, like Beasties, Mudhoney, Soundgun, he was on grunge 
before anybody else was on grunge. So is that good luck? Or if you do it again and again and again and again and again and again and again, is it genius? You tell me. When I started out, it was all new, it was all exciting, and I was doing new things and meeting new people. And, you know, I was able to use some creativity or some sort of directional vision for what we would do with the show and how we'd go about it. And then as a lot of these bands became more popular and the industry sort of changed and a lot of this stuff tipped over, towards the end I felt like I was just working in a, in a factory really or um, in a public service and just getting given a document, stamping it, passing it on. So at the same time I started the record label um, and began working with bands from a really embryonic stage and being able to be involved in you know, things as basic as photo shoots, you know, artwork for albums, uh, making videos and watching them sort of develop and I just found it a lot more rewarding and satisfying. So when I found like there's energy or interest in it for me, then I can do anything, you know. Uh, and when I kind of lose that kind of interest, I just, I can't be bothered getting out of bed. <laughs> so it's, it's gone. <laughs>